In our last MRA mapping video, we learned how to embed a public map into a blog post. But today I wanted to cover a little more advanced topic on smart mapping. And this comes from questions and answers working with some of the MRA members. So if we go back to our original web map, you can see here we've got some layers on the map. But I really want to give this map some focus. And you'll notice here I'm just showing all missions for Vermont. But we might want to focus in on some specific um, common types of uh, missions and categories. In addition, we also see a Vermont state boundary here, which is also present on the base map. But I want to use that here to focus in on the state of Vermont. So let's take a look at a quick trick. In GIS, there's a concept of creating a mask. And basically, the mask means I want to show uh, states that are not Vermont and I'll apply that filter. But in this case, I'm going to symbolize all the states that aren't Vermont very simply. It's just a light gray fill with some transparency. And you can see here now, I can still see other areas of the, uh, the country, including Canada, but uh, it focuses in on the Vermont state boundary a bit more. So that's a little trick known as a mask. Next, what I'd like to do is focus in on the symbology of our information. We see here we've got the MRA missions for Vermont, but it's pretty generic. Through smart mapping, and you can see I did that here by uh, highlighting the layer, clicking on the name, and then just clicking on change style. This will open up a number of options. I could simply represent this as a heat map, although I actually want to learn a little bit more about my data and share that with the public. So here I'm showing location only, but I can also symbolize by a variety of attributes in the data. In this case, I'm interested in a subject category. What was the activity of the subject, uh, the person who was rescued? By default, it'll just separate uh, out the categories, or at least the most common ones, with some colors. But this is a lot of information to take on the map. I can see here that red areas are hiking, but with so many different categories, it might still be a little bit overwhelming for my audience. So here's what I'd like to do. I can click on options, and I can look at the most common events here. We can see hiking, s snow skiing, biking, and there's a whole bunch of incidents that only occurred maybe once or twice. Well, in this layer, what I'd like to do is just show the maybe the top three most common. To do this, I can simply drag the items that are least common and put them down here. We're not going to eliminate them from the map, but we're going to use a copy of this layer to show them a bit later on. I'm also going to turn off other. If you remove one that you wanted to keep. Remember, you're not actually changing the data. You're just changing the way it's represented. And I'll just move this value back up. For symbology, you have a lot of options. And you can use custom symbols in ArcGIS Online. But what I'll start with here is a really simple one. For hiking, I can use many, many different shapes. For instance, I can use the National Park Service. And I might be able to find a little icon of someone who's hiking here. That one looks pretty good. And I want to change the symbol size. I might be able to find someone skiing here, or I can go out and search online for one. Let's use that one for now. Oh, actually, that one looks a little intense, but we'll use that for skiing just for now. And then biking. And we can use the light version or the dark version. Whatever is going to make the most sense on your map.
Now, none of these changes are permanent, so we can we can look at some other options as well. Uh, if you don't like these symbols, you can actually go in, and there's something as simple as just simple letters. So you might choose H for hiking and S for skiing. It all depends on how you want to uh, represent your map. So now we have missions represented by subject category. And because this is specific, I'm going to go ahead and change the name. And I'll say missions by most common category. And what I'll do to bring back those other missions, I'll just create a copy. And I'll call this missions other. Now instead, what I'll do here is change the style. I'll just represent by location only. And I can use uh, any other symbol that, I, that I'd like to use. And you'll see that it'll show up in my legend wherever this map is shared. And just like that, we're able to make a map that maybe tells us a little bit more information. Here are the most common missions, and I can see them very clearly where the hiking missions are versus skiing versus biking. Save my map. In this case, I'll make a copy. And then anywhere where that map is embedded or shared or if it's being consumed by an app, those symbols will change and my, uh, all of my audience will see that. I hope this was a good quick tip for you and you can uh, play around a little bit with smart mapping and learn about symbology in ArcGIS Online. Thank you.